so in this tutorial we'll try to model this this is for one of my client so let us try to model it uh, the total length is 10 20 30, 20 20 15 so the total length would be let's check how much is the total length So total length is 10 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 15 85 centimeter okay so the tank total length is 85 centimeter in meter it will be 0 0.85 so for that what I'll do <coughs> the tank will I'll model the tank using rigid because I don't need the deformation of the tank so what I'll do I'll uh, rigid and I'll use shell I'll use extrusion so for this uh, what I'll do okay let us first make a planar shell so the tank diameter we need now let us check the tank diameter so these are the details so barrel diameter is 0 0.3 meter okay so for 0 0.3 diameter is 0 0.3 means radius will be 0 0.15 ah uh, yeah 0 0.15 radius so it is very tiny <laughs> because i have kept the grid spacing like that very sure so you have the base now we need to extrude it we need to extrude the shell Now for extrusion of the shell, I'll use the same diameter. Now in which direction I want to extrude, I want to extrude in this direction and the height will be 0 0.85. So we have our tank now. Okay, I made a mistake. This should not be solid. I'll have to find out the shell. So for getting this shell, okay. So this is the shell extruder. I should have selected this one. So now I'll make it of the same. shape it will be 0 0.85 done so we have our tank now and as i have mentioned i have made it discrete rigid so i'll have to assign a reference point i'll assign the reference point at the bottom Why I have created the it as a discrete because I am not interested in the deformation of it. I am only interested in the deformation of my soil model. Now I need to create the soil model for that. Uh, my soil model will be of same size and thickness. 
so I'll create the soil I'll use solid extrusion it will be diameter will be of 0 0.15 and I'll extrude it up to 0 0.85 so this is my soil now I'll take both my soil okay hold on there might be a mistake uh, I need to check it once more okay so full soil this is correct I'll take both of this okay so there is an issue A solid is cannot be installed assembly, it can be converted to shell by using okay. Uh, there is some issue, so instead of making it here rigid, uh, what I'll do, I'll make it, I'll make the tank now for the time being, I'll make it deformable and later I'll make it rigid uh, using the interaction properties. I'll make it rigid because Abacus has some issue with it. okay sorry sorry i made a mistake i've made a big mistake actually i didn't notice that so my tank will be discrete rigid only and my soil will not be discrete rigid because i need that deformation of it this is the mistake i made so these are my now i have my tank and the soil so you can see this is my soil and this is my tank so what I'll do now is I'll rotate both of this and I'll make it vertical I can keep it like this but still I just want to make it vertical I'll rotate about X axis. No, I think it should have been minus 90. Yeah, now that's fine. Now, if I keep it like this, if I just hide the tank, we have the side, I have hidden the soil, so we have the tank now. We both have okay now now here I need the pile diameter and pile height so pile diameter and pile height let us make the pile first pile so the diameter of the pile is 0 0.025 meter that means uh, the, the 0 0.025 into 0 0.5 0 0.125 is my radius 0 0.125 so that's my radius if I just click this I'll get over here uh, this is because I have kept the this uh, grid spacing very high, which is why I'm getting it. You can, if you reduce it, you'll get you can visualize it properly. Pile height is 1.38 meter. 1.38 meter. So this is my pile height. I'll go to assembly. I'll take the pile also here. Again, I made a mistake. I didn't notice it. But my pile will be deformable instead of discrete rigid. This is my pile. I'll rotate my pile about x axis. 
done. 90 degree. Let this be minus 90. Okay. Now I have to position it properly. For that, what I'll do is uh, what I'll do is putting our bottom of barrel is full of swell and the pile is placed on top of that layer. So pile is placed top layer at 15 centimeter from the bottom. So I'll have to create a point from here or I would say from bottom so from bottom I have to select this point this is my bottom most point and 15 centimeters that means uh, 0 0.15 meter so x will be 0 y will be 0 0.15 and z will be 0 so at this point I must place my pile so I'll place my pile over here. So from this point to this point. My pile is placed over there correctly. Now to visualize it, I'll use this view. Now see, my pile have been placed properly at 15 centimeter above. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll create a groove and uh, <coughs> so I'll create a groove in the soil so for that what I'll do is I want to cut so for cutting I have to use this selector plane. This is the plane. I'll place it on the right side, and this is the. This will be the radius of pile 0 0.0125, and this cut will be made up to. Uh, um, it will be of. Uh, mine is 0 0.85 minus 0 0.15, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. This much group is there. Now, if I take it to assembly, just want to check it. I'll use this. I'll use this. And if I just make this, you see my pile have been placed properly. I'll apply it. Okay. I've hidden the pile. You can see the groove is created properly. Now I'll create a partition for it so that I can mesh it properly. For that, what I will do is I'll use this, I'll extend this edge in a direction. Okay, I'm not getting any straight a or a data axis so it is asking me to select the data axis or select z okay i need to create a data axis here create a data axis principal axis i need z axis so i'll select a data axis this click ok create partition so we have got partition here um, then I'll create the partition using the face okay so we have created the partition 
for easy meshing. So our modeling is nearly completed. Now just need to assign the boundary condition, the friction and all and this step. So we'll be using let us check what model can be used material steel for pile density with 7850 kg per meter cube elasticity will be 2.1 to 5 polymer ratio 0 0.3 and i'll use one plastic value for 10 mpa and zero so this will be steel and then i have the soil for soil uh, my client have given me the data so So for that we have uh, density 78 word ratio elastic property okay so they have given me the elastic property 114 114 density I'll use uh, here they have given relative density uh, for that what I'll do is he has given me some density also density is 1900 kg per meter cube so I'll use the same density nineteen hundred then mechanical elasticity hundred fourteen that's what it has written newton mm so e raised to the power because if you check it it is mpa which is newton per mm square so mm square will be transfer minus six transfer six okay we are using in meter right okay and Poisson's ratio will be 0 0.15 so I need to change it for the steel also and the material they have used is uh, Dakar Prajar so let's check uh, order the material if I use Dakar Prajar direction angle angle of friction angle of friction is my fifty point two flow stress zero point seven seven eight and dilation angle is twenty hardening zero point one three zero 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 point two zero point two zero seven 
Here the strain will be 0 0.01 0 0.032 0 0.032 0 0.098 0 0.258 So we have used the hardening behavior type So the material has been created. Let us assign the material. This is my soil. I'll assign the material for soil. Use homogeneous soil. Done. Done. Then pile is made up of steel. Assign the pile for pile. I'll create pile homogeneous and make steel I'll select the pile done now I forgot to modify one thing that steel I have given uh, this is in mm mm square so it will be here is to 6 and this will be also here is to 6 so all are in meter now one more thing uh, this value is in MPA right so I'll have to convert it to meter so I made another mistake so these are silly mistakes you must have to take care of it if you do not then your model will give you incorrect results so I'll have to add it as well everywhere because all these are in meter square not in M square so from meter square to mm square you'll have to uh, these are stress values so newton per meter square so mm square to multiply with this was 6 now everything is correct material assignment have been completed now i need to add few more things these are my now i need to add few more things like this conductivity and all so edit mechanical go to thermal conductivity the conductivity is soil conductivity is 3 w and k 3 specific it 800 800 density I have used then for steel also conductivity 64 I'll check the unit once and it is 466 specific hit 466 so what I'll do I'll check the unit once so so my units are correct so we have completed up to the property so all the properties have been assigned now what we'll do is we'll create a step so first uh, here we'll perform the pull out test without assigning any temperature and all so let us start uh, we have all soil then we have tank then we have the pile so let us do it in a explicit step so I will delete this step so I will create it again it will be a dynamic explicit though it is dynamic explicit but it will be a quasi-static analysis. I'll run it for one second. 
and let everything be automatic we don't have to select anything let this be automatic time increment so this will be quasi static analysis quasi static analysis implies that uh, though it is dynamic analysis or uh, uh, loading will be such that we, there will not be any effect of inertia in the model so uh, this one I have created uh, now why I need a reference point I need a reference point right now I have deleted a reference point because previously I have created it so just to show now in the video I will create again I will go to interaction I will create a reference point now see reference point you need to assign at some point so I will delete this point because I have created previously now just to show you I will create it again so what I will do I will take some offset from this point so from this point x will be 0 y will be let us say any value uh, let us say 0 0.1 and z will be 0 so this point that we have got now uh, this is basically uh, any point of the uh, pile so why because i'll make the pile to behave as whole for the pull out test uh, the pile uh, will be behaving like a rigid uh, element so it will have deformation because i just want uh, I just want to get the load carrying capacity or the how much load the uh, pile will sustain if when I pull it so for that I don't want any internal deformation in the pile so for that I'll make it a rigid pile to make the rigid uh, I'll use the rigid body constraint so for that uh, I'll go to the view and I'll use this window to hide uh, everything except pile so I'll hide everything except pile now I'll select first element I'll select all the elements of the pile next I'll select all the nodes of the pile again I'll unselect the reference nodes uh, press control and unselect it then then select the reference point so we have done we have made it rigid now what i'll do is i'll switch on everything uh, now i need to define some interaction between the this uh, pile and the soil so for that i'll use a general contact uh, general contact will be sufficient uh, what do, do you mean by general contact means whenever there will be two instances for example pile is a, is a separate instance soil is a separate instance so whenever there will be two interaction between the two instances so this general contact will be used for that I'll have to create a property the property will be tangential behavior I'll use friction of let's say 0. Point uh, let's have, use a very high friction 0 0.75 you can use this friction based on your result or based on your data available and normal behavior hard contact what do you mean by normal behavior suppose you are pushing your hand on the wall so as you cannot penetrate the wall that is simulated using normal behavior so that's all I just select it done and one more thing I'll do I'll tie the uh, tank with the soil so for that I'll tie the tank so what I'll have to I'll have to unselect everything I have to hide everything except the tank so now I'll, I'll select the tank now uh, I'll select the surface so I have selected the tank it is asking me which surface see the inner one is uh, purple and the outer one is brown so I, I need the outer one 
right so but see there is an issue here uh, for this for this the soil the side for the side face the inner one is purple but for the bottom the outer one is purple so what I'll do is uh, I'll select a flip a surface select the surface or select this surface so this surface have been flipped now all my inner surface are purple so I'll select the purple because it is a shell element so it will have two surface now I'll select the slab surface so slab surface will be my soil outer surface so for that uh, I'll have the soil surface only here then I'll use this view then I'll tie the soil surface so the soil surface have been finally tied so the tank has been tied with the soil surface and interaction have been defined now I'll simply uh, mesh it and uh, I'll submit the analysis or oh, before that I'll need to assign the boundary condition so what I'll do is uh, as you know that I have simulated the I'll be simulating it for one second so over here the time duration is one second so I'll go to load and uh, I'll go to boundary condition manager I'll create a boundary condition I'll apply displacement rotation it will be displacement pile so basically I'll I'll be pulling the pile so I'll apply it to this reference point the boundary condition and okay so I need to create an explicit step do not create an initial steps and create in the express step that you have created then okay u2 will be uh, a little bit positive side u2 is y so positive side uh, the value let's say i want to pull it for one meter i'll pull it up to one meter and uh, I will not pull it all of a sudden I will pull it gradually so that I have to assign uh, amplitude so for one second it will be one so at every inst time step it will getting multiplied with this one value one meter so at one second it will be one meter and at zero second it will be zero so this will vary linearly uh, this amplitude will take care of the gradual increment of the load you can check the plot of the amplitude using amplitude plotter simply plot it yeah so that's uh, that's what that's how the amplitude will behave uh, with increase in time it will multiply the magnitude one meter with these fractions as the time progress for example at 0 0.2 second the displacement or uh, it will pull the pile up to 0 0.2 into 1 that is 0 0.2 meter uh, next one more boundary condition I need to assign tank will be fixed so for that I'll go to initial the fixed condition of the tank will be as assigned at the initial stage now I will cancel this this one I will select the reference point because I have created the tank as rigid so if I just select the reference point that will be more than sufficient for me to assign the uh, boundary condition for the tank done just fixed it so now all my boundary conditions have been assigned and I will now go to mesh uh, it has been meshed previously uh, what I'll do I'll delete the mesh 
and I'll show you now how to mesh it. So simply assign the global set. Here I'll I'll uh, I'll use a larger size. Simply assign the global seed. I'll use larger size for uh, just for the video purpose. But when you'll be doing, use a smaller mesh size. So for here, uh, if I use 0 0.1, let me check. Uh, it's becoming too large, so I'll reduce little bit. 0 0.05. So I think this 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 perfect now I think. Uh, let me check how many elements. Okay, so not correct. Uh, what I'll do is I will I'll reduce I'll reduce the size more. Just I want I want for better visualization I want more number of elements. So that's okay for now. So everything has been finished. I'll simply go to the job. Uh, this one I have created previously. So you avoid it. I'll create a job again. And the model one, I'll, I'm working in model one over here, as you can see. So model one, I'll name it as model one. And this will be my pull out, pull out, pull out, capital P, capital O, pull P for P stands for pull, O stands for out, uh, normal, normal means I'm using normal cell, I'm not using the uh, any other cell because uh, there will be three phase, uh, three models one uh, using normal soil then i will freeze the soil and then we'll uh, do the pull out test and there will be another one, heat transfer so for the time being i'll simply use this i'll use number of processors as four done i'll submit this pull out test let's just submit and if there is an error then i'll rectify that error Uh, this model I have created previously, so just to show for showing the video, I have uh, uh, created again. I have deleted all the components and I have uh, uh, remodeled it. So the analysis will, is running quite okay. Let's check the monitor. We'll have to wait for some time to get the results. Uh, what I'll do, I'll kill the job and I'll just type, I'll increase the number of output requirement. What happens, uh, I'll show you as we are doing the simulation for one second. So, over here, if you just go now, here they have made it 20 wins. Uh, for one second they will only give you 20 output but I need suppose 500 so it will divide 1 by 500 and it will give me 500 outputs so we'll submit now again let's check the results Okay, let's check the monitor how the analysis is processing. So this is all I have for the pullout test. So over here as you can see it is processing. So the analysis have been completed, now let's check the results.
on right click on the job file and click on the results so it will take some time to display based on your computer speed we'll check the reaction force or uh, i would say the bearing capacity of the pile how much load it can sustain so the moment i will click this you will see that the pile have come out of the soil so if i just show you an animation of it then uh, i'll go here i'll uh, use you you to for better representation now let's see i'll reduce the speed little bit animation speed this is how you control the animation speed this so you can see pile is coming out uh, instead of u2 let us uh, select any other variable so it will be visible in a proper way uh, let us take a cut If you see, this is how the pile is coming out. I'll again play it from the beginning. No. As you can see, it is applying strain on the walls of the uh, soil. If you check it, this is because of the, the friction that we have applied. If you see, it is applying. If I just remove. this so this is how the stress let's see the let us check the animation once more. So over here as you can see the strain whole the model is getting affected Now let us 
uh, check the reaction force for checking the reaction force and to go to create go to audio field output and before that I'll switch on everything so yeah stop the animation I'll add the steel also and so I'll I'll, uh, I'll have to untick the cut so now I have my model here now I need reaction force at this reference point so for that I'll simply select RF2 and I also need U2 because I want to plot the reaction uh, displacement versus reaction so for that I'll go to node set and I'll highlight it I'll check which node is that reference node uh, I'll, I'll click this one so it will be easier for me to check I'll have to get this exterior edge most of in set 13 is the this reference node this reference point so one more thing you can do you can just pick from viewport edit selection and it will ask you select nodes in viewport so you can simply select this one and plot it the moment you click plot here the process will go on it will take some time to extract the displacement and the load So we have got our load versus displacement, uh, not load versus displacement, both load and displacement plot. So this is the graph I have created earlier, I will delete this first. So we have this RF and U2. So first your job is to save it. Once you save it, you click XY1, this is force versus time and this is force versus displacement. Now if I want to plot the force versus displacement, then I will go to operate on XY data simply go here use combine click on combine then click on u2 double click on u2 and double click on rf2 plot expression so we have got load versus displacement curve i'll save it you can get this data by edit this is displacement this is load for xy data trace so this is load versus displacement and this is the maximum load that the pile can carry so this is how you can estimate the load carrying capacity of the pile.